Okay, folks, click the links for Odyssey, BitChute, Discord, or Coffee, or it is in an email. So, uh, Starfire, a cry for help, the Mariko Tamake story, and I blame Johnny Depp and all those movies from the 80s. So I noticed, first of all, that a few other YouTubers were saying, yeah, it sucked, but that the other YouTubers' criticism was petty or something. There are a few channels who aren't exactly Comicscape, but they're right on the penumbra, within the penumbra, I guess, or anti-comicscape, but they love to jab when, whenever they can get a little shot to stick something in, as if to say, um, you're only saying you don't like the comic because it's an SJW story. Stop it. Get help. We all read it. Get off your high horse. Any reason to hate SJWs is beautiful and valid because they're filthy, spiritually ugly, broken people. They need to be belittled and humiliated as much as possible. A lot of people who have been reviewing this story, um, I really doubt most of them bought it. It's 15 bucks, which is weird because, well, it's not worth 15 bucks. It's not worth anything, but it's not for kids, which is what the simple art style kind of is leading you to believe. And the, I think the art's great. I like it. I like the style a whole lot. I like how she's very, uh, artist is very expressive. Um, it's for young adults, but the level of writing is for little kids. But it has sexual themes in it. There's no amount of money that you could discount it for to be worth worth it to read it, because it just goes on way too long and says nothing. First of all, nobody wants to read about a fat, annoying goth girl. Comics are about being visually appealing. Uh, but I'm showing some of the funny scenes in here. Like, like I said, this, this comic is kind of annoying because it could have been something. Like, you're very, very close to being good. You know, it's like there's a lot of movies you look at and you're like, yeah, they were almost good. I can't quite hate them. It's like, yeah, you almost, you just missed it. Like, yeah, they're bad, but you just missed being good. Where some other projects had no hope in hell of ever coming close to being good. This would have been great if someone... Like, took her aside and had a little come-to-Jesus moment. Said, you know, let's shorten it up and tighten it up. So, the character is just a blob. Um, fat people don't all hate being fat. Like, once you get past a certain age, it really doesn't bother you as much. But they don't love it. Fat people do not want to be fat, mostly. Uh, fat kids mostly want to be... All let me say all entirely. They all want to be lean, fit, and attractive. If you remember what it was like to be a teenager. But besides the visuals... It hurts the storytelling to have an obese teenager. Obesity is a negative. You can't church it up into something positive. It's like the lowest state, entropy and enthalpy, or order versus chaos. This isn't the story of an uh, obese uh, teenager, depressed teenager, who's not just slightly chubby. She's like 50 pounds overweight. It tells the reader that the kid is not physically active. So all the physical things that a kid is supposed to be doing that you did in your childhood, she's not doing because she's depressed and that makes for a very tough sale. The uh, the vibe is freaky goth girls who feel sorry for themselves while simultaneously thinking that they're better than everyone else. But like, I, like some of these scenes here are funny. Like you had, you just missed being funny. South Park has parodied, parodied this trope for years. And before that, probably Beavis and Butthead. But the whole thing is so silly and tired. You know, the whole, like, goth and you know, edgy and just, uh, Like, that's 40 years old. And I don't know who started the goth theme, but I think Edward Scissorhands made it popular. There were a bunch of movies in the 80s and 90s that pushed with witchcraft and the, the fashion that came along with it. It's probably a lot of fun to wear velvet and black lace, but to pull it off, you need to be very lean. Cheekbones and jawlines are the big selling points. And really, you know, if you've got cheekbones and jawlines, you can kind of pull off almost any look. Um, you can put a ribbon on a pig, but it's still going to be a pig. You would have been better off making her like five pounds overweight and cranky, um, but you're not, you're not writing a story. You're checking boxes. And I kind of feel like if this was done in Japan, that would have been the theme. Like, she would have been just a few pounds overweight and cranky and, I don't know, she needed to find a boyfriend who would... Something like that. Like, everything the Japanese do is just so much better than any, any comics coming out of America. I, let me say comics coming out of SGWs in America. Comicsgate is, uh, is off to a very, very strong start. 
So everything is just purse puppy oppression ladder checklist points. Everyone has to be vaguely POC, but oddly enough, the body diversity chick, i.e. the cookie monster, is in love with a fit girl. Why isn't she wetting her panties over another chunk of butter? Because she, even she doesn't find fatties attractive. The Faith comic did the same thing. Faith was like 300 pounds and like just half butter. Yet for some reason, her boyfriend was a bodybuilder. Do you believe in body diversity or not? These people are nothing if not hypocrites. If you really believe in body positivity, then the object of desire also has to be Shamu, or it doesn't make any sense. For $15, I suspect that you could find something a lot better on Amazon in the comic section. But this comic isn't for me. I'm not a fat goth girl, unfortunately. But now that I think about it, most fat goth girls probably don't want to read about other fat chicks. They want to be the skinny, waifish type like Winona Ryder and Johnny Depp in those movies. Because most people would love to drop five pounds of fat. Uh, but brownies taste delicious. I have a bag of brownie cookies. They're like the top part of the brownie, the crust part. It's like it was like pressed into a cookie. They're absolutely delicious. And they're in the other room and they're calling my name, but I'm, I'm resisting the call for now. We, we all wanted to be, I don't know, wayfish or at least fit uh, in high school or grammar school, whatever. Uh, very, very few kids are into it, like reading about chubs. But... Uh, oh, before I forget, I wanted to say, um, people in Comics Gate are always telling beginners to... Oh, this was beautifully drawn. I loved this. Uh, they're always telling beginners to stick with 48 pages. Tell a tight, fast-moving story. 48 pages is perfect for that. The other thing, with Comics Gate, at least, is you always want to do the least amount of work for the most profit. Don't do what I'm doing, which is... Uh, a fair amount of work for almost no profit. <laughs> it's better to sell the first book as 48 pages. If they like it, sell the follow-up. You can make twice the profit that way. This book is way too long. She wastes panels on her daily goth makeup routine and dyeing her hair. Totally unnecessary. We get it. She dyes her hair and she's depressed and she listens to her iPod whatever. That was like six panels. You, all you have to do is show a bottle of hair dye. And it's like, oh, she dyed her hair black. Get rid of all the stuff that is repetitive. Even sh showing her eating so often is a total waste. We know she overeats. You don't get to be a fatty unless you consume more energy than you expend. That's just the unfortunate way of the universe. Now, here's the thing. This could have been funny. It has the whole Molly Ringwald 1980s thing going on, which I think after this I'm going to go put on one of those Better Off Dead or Molly Ringwald or something. You can jump into the John Cusack Better Off Dead vibe. And in fact, that would have been a much better overall tone to strike. Humor. A lot of just non-stop humor, like F, F my life type of humor. But like, well, I guess in the movie he was trying to self-delete. Still, they made it funny, which you probably couldn't do nowadays. Instead, this comes across as a self-indulgent cat lady comic written for other future cat ladies. Uh, even one of the Soy Boy reviewers uh, had to say that, yeah, the comic's great, but it's not written for him. And the thing is, the lead protagonist, yeah, she has some funny lines that you really should have stuck with that theme of her being funny. Kind of laughing at her like awkward teenage years, something like that. Instead, you made her into a see you next Tuesday. She's fat and miserable, which misery may be out of your hands. God probably hates you. But being fat is a choice. All you have to do is skip dinner, and after a few months, you'll be pretty damn lean. You might as well be miserable and skinny. You know, pick your battles in life. You don't want to be fat and ugly. So the protagonist is a person mad at the world, but what they put out is what they get back. And I don't know why someone would write crap like this. Mm, I'm not coming up with any reasons. It doesn't outrage the chads. It's just boring. Mariko Tamaki took the tropes of the 1980s films, which were excellent, and, went, 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 and which you will never see again. And Mariko brings nothing fresh to the table. The best you can say is that the potential was there, but then Mariko just ignored the potential and wrote 16 Candles, but removed the cute girl and replaced her with a 170-pound abomination. 
But again, it's not the artist's fault that they're dragged along um, to this kind of thing. That's a great, great shot. Oh, and then you made the blue-eyed girl say the meanest things. Oh, look, it's Super Chub. That's funny, but you can't make the bl blonde-haired, blue or the whatever, auburn-haired, blue-eyed girl in every comic. It's like blue-eyed people about it. So that's kind of dumb. Oh, and they're mad at her because she played softball or something, and she let a catch go by. She she let, I don't know what they call that when you catch the ball. It's like an out or something. She let So she let that go by. It's like, all you had to do is catch the ball, and, and, and you're they can't score that point. It's like, that's all you have to do. So she let it go by. It's like, they're mad at her because she threw the game away by being apathetic. So it's like, that's not bullying outside of the changing room. You're an a-hole and you're getting some feedback. Like, pay attention to the game next time. It's like, even though it's just a game, we, we still want to win. It's like, if you're not even going to catch the ball, then why are you even there for? Oh, and then of course the blonde hair, I mean the um, blue-eyed girl has to be the one who's, of course, it's like every time, it's like you, you can make the black people the uh, antagonists, the uh, what's it called when they receive the sword, the foil. Um, you don't have to, you don't have to do it, do this to the um, the whitest white person you can find. It's just, it's done. It's over. It's overdone in in comics. Great movie. My God, what's the value of all this snow? A great movie. You'll never see a movie. Like, the whole movie, he's trying to eat himself. And he falls in love with one girl, follows another girl. Uh, and Sixteen Candles, another good movie. Edward Scissorhands. I don't remember that one for the life of me. Like, that was kind of more a chick flick for some reason. Because the chicks were probably just wetting themselves over, um, what's his face? Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp. Anyway, like, comment, subscribe, guys. And I will see you all next episode.